Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Rayson. I am a forest gardener and a forest garden designer. And today I wanted to talk about creating a miniature woodland forest garden. And I just want to give you a bit of background about this. So for those people who don't know, which, which is the vast majority of the world, I have been working on a um, website on an eco homes project over in West Wales in a village called Boncath. It's a property. There's, there are uh, ten buildings. So, oh goodness me, hold on. <laughs> I've forgotten how many. Seven. Oh, I can't even remember how many buildings there are. It's ridiculous. Um, there's there's a few buildings kicking around. Uh, there's social housing on one side, and then there's uh, private housing on the other. Oh yes, there we go. So there's, sorry, five buildings. On the, the on the social on the left hand side on the uh, uh, the westerly side, uh, which is ten dwellings, and then there's going to be five detached houses on the on the easterly side. And I've been work I've been doing the landscaping, forest garden landscaping in amongst the homeschooling. So it's all been a bit it's been a bit full on. Uh, and what has happened is, which is absolutely fine, so I've been through this before, I've been creating fruit bushes for hedges and fruit trees rather than just any old trees and climbers. So there's, there's a mixture of wild, um, native and edible. So it's, it's kind of proper forest garden, not full on forest garden, unfortunately. So there is a lot of lawn to do, uh, which I'm going to do this month. But it is like proper forest garden. So you can see this is a this is a plan view, so you can see each of the properties. Um, <clears throat> now, what has happened is, and this is a website. So on the website, oh, it is it is pretty cool. On the website, this is property number eight here. Uh, I have been listing every single plant, not every single plant, but the the, the plants that are used and the different hedges and stuff. So that so number eight, for example, has an Asian pear at the front. There's an apple at the back. Uh, there's Iberian comfrey ground cover, and then the hedge is a Josta berry, um, at plus red currant, white currant, and then there's a red dogwood. So you get the idea. It's just listing every every plant which is which is on each property. So when there is a community garden set up for Bechlan Ayer, uh, that people will know what they're looking after, and they'll have an idea of how to care for it as well. So they kind of have there's a sense of ownership, a sense of knowledge, and a sense of ownership. And the plan is to do workshops so that people do the maintenance themselves on their gardens, but also on the kind of public highway too, and also going forward for the for a, a community garden, a community forest garden, which is going to be created. So that's the kind of idea behind the Eco Homes project. It's very much for me very much focused around creating a community around the gardens and what's happened was on the <clears throat> on the north side and let me just grab let me show you the cad so here you see on the bottom is the north side and on the north side here are this is all shady at the front and these are flats so what they've done is to protect the privacy of uh, the down of the downstairs flat. They've put in fencing, so but you put in fencing on the north side of a, a north-facing garden. That means where there's there was little light anyway. Now there is even less light, which means grass will not grow. So originally I said, oh, this really ought to be hard standing because then it could be a utility space where the entrance is. And then it'd be used for you know bikes or, uh, or whatever, uh, but unfortunately the <laughs> there wasn't the budget or the time for it. Um, so now it's uh, I, I said okay we'll do a woodland garden. So that's that's the kind of background to it. And you can see here on the photograph this is a picture of the the fencing, and this is north facing, and it's kind of really it's really dark. So grass will it will not grow or it will grow very badly. It'll be a bit of a bit of a dead space plus it's really really damp there's a real problem with drainage on the site as well it's a very damp field plus the soil is subsoil is compacted and hasn't been dealt with 
So, um, what I'm going to show you, oh no, I talk about the actual the, the the plan for it. So, what I've done is to create. You can see there. There's two sides. There's a a, a miniature, a small square on the on 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 the left hand side, and then there's kind of like an an L shape or some sort of weird dog leg shape on the right hand side and you can see the Tesla battery as well and I'm just going to show you the plan that I have created and then I'll show you a little film and this is why there this is why CAD is so cool because it's enabled me to create I mean I don't you don't have to do a CAD plan if you've got your own garden there is no need to do a CAD plan like this the reason for doing a cab plan is so that when I come to do six front, small front gardens, admittedly small, I know what plant is going where. And I, if it's just one garden, it's your garden, that's fine. You don't need to do CAD. But if you've got six of them to do and it's not your garden, you're not on site all the time, then yes, I would say to get, learn CAD and do it. So this is the... I don't know if you can see that there. That's the, the actual the actual plan itself, and this is why it's so handy. Oh, see, and then you can see a list of plants that I've written down with the numbers on them. So for each each side, I know how roughly how many plants are. It's it's a guide. It's not exact. It it really depends on what you have available. Oh, that's what I did mean to do actually. So with this, uh, the wildflower nursery. I um, had a big old list of plants, which, um, yeah, big, big list of plants. I wanted to go for natives where possible, plus I put in some, I bought some rhubarb and I bought some uh, hosta uh, as well. And the idea is so that it's, 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 a, it's a woodland native plant, mostly native with a bit of rhubarb and a bit and, and some hosta, which are both edible. <clears throat> So hosta, you eat the shoots when they come up in spring. Not all of them, let some come up so the plant can grow. And then rhubarb, you eat the stalks, obviously. Um, and then there's, uh, yeah. So I then had to find the plants. And this is all very last minute. This is all like, oh my goodness me, what am I going to do with the space? Let's get some plants. So I got in touch with British Wildflower Plants, who are really good. They're, they're kind of a bit, they're a big organisation. So they're kind of difficult to get hold of people. They didn't have um, any, they weren't getting in touch. They weren't replying to the emails uh, and the phone calls. <laughs> I was saying, please, I need to get some plug plants, but I need them now. So I got in touch with, luckily, uh, Lindsay at Wildflower Nursery down in Pembrokeshire near Haverford West. And she's a much, much smaller nursery just starting out. Um, but uh, she had some plants, and I just kind of said, "Oh, I'll have all your, I'll have all your uh, ground ivy, and you know whatever she had." I kind of she suggested plants, and I, I kind of was trying to work out how much shade there was. So a lot of the plants is all very much what was in stock, and then put all mashed together. So my biggest concern is is if is, is if there's too much shade. But that's Lindsay at the Wildflower Nursery, and that's where I ended up getting the plants from. So a lot of the plant list that I have created, if you have a look, I'm going to turn that off. If you have a look here, this is oh this is the the, the spreadsheet that I've created for um for a list the list of the plants that I have from from Lindsay. And uh, it's, it's, it's only 20 plants, but it's also the beginning of a, of a wildflower spreadsheet, my garden wild spreadsheet. And the interesting thing about this is it's actually really, really fascinating is that a lot of the plants that I've, that I've been looking at, they are all, they are pretty much, they are forest garden plants anyway. And I was just amazed at how many plants, how many UK native wildflowers are edible or medicinal or herbs or they've got some use or they've they've got system use they can provide nutrients or they they're they're wildflower plants they attract pollinators there's this it is it is pretty much every single uk native plant so originally i was going to have they are a link to the rhs so there's a common there's a the botanical name uh, so, for example, Achillea millifolium, which is yarrow, lovely plant, brilliant. I love, I love it. It's a brilliant plant. Um, yeah, kind of. It's called a weed, <laughs> but it's it's amazing. Uh, so, 
that from a botanical point of view, there's the British Society, uh, British Society, Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland, BSBI, and they put together a plant database. Oh, goodness sake, why does it keep crashing out like this? It's really annoying. Uh, there's a, they've got an online atlas of all the plants and it's good it's good from kind of distribution and the kind of figures the actual botanical information about a plant so that's fantastic so that's one link from a spreadsheet is to this online atlas of uh yeah, online atlas of uh, uk native wildflowers and the, the, uh, it's also really good for ha habitats and life form. I've used it a lot. This is oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So I've used it a lot for working out the height as well, uh, and kind of calculating roughly how how big a plant will get when it's mature. Uh, and then I was going to use the RHS. Now there is a filter, a native filter on the RHS Plant Finder website, uh, which is pretty, which is which is cool, but they don't really cover that many uh, UK native wildflowers. They do cover some, the main ones, but not. there's a lot they don't cover. So what I actually ended up using was plants for a future. So here, over back on the spreadsheet, you can see there's the botanical name links to the, the plant atlas by um, the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland. And then the common name Will link to where wherever it, will link to plants for a future. So plants for a future is an online database of useful plants. Uh, started off by Ken Fern and family and, and friends and, and people, and it's run by a trust. Absolutely brilliant resource. Really really good. It's what's behind the forest garden spreadsheet, uh, which is listed called Martin Crawford's plants in, from his book. So it's a brilliant brilliant uh, resource, and pretty much every single UK native wildflower is in there. So that's what I've used for that as well. So it's, it's a great. The two of them together work perfectly. So for the more kind of botanical information, um, what you know, what family it's in, and you know all the rest of it. There's the online atlas, and then for the uh, the uses of the plant, there is the uh, the plants for a future, and they're both coming off of that spreadsheet. So this has been really really good. And I'm a, a, a real beginner when it comes to ornamental gardening and gardening with flowers as well. So I can my <laughs> my background. I've been planting a lot of trees and go oh trees, ground cover, and herbaceous perennials and perennial vegetables. So this is a real you know something I'm interested in and it's kind of the direction I'm heading. But what I really want to do with my <laughs> with my uh, with my work is to bring the different elements of gardening together because I think this is it's perfect forest gardening is is perfect for drawing together the ornamental gardening and the edible gardening the vegetable gardening and the um wild wildlife gardening as well so this is how it can do it so this little project creating these little miniature woodland gardens has been absolutely brilliant because it has enabled me to start researching about wildflowers and start creating resources that other people can use as well um oh and then the other oh dear yeah yeah the other the other thing there are just a quick couple a quick couple of notes at this point as well so doing the research what i have also found very useful uh is wikipedia uh for two reasons firstly there's the commons.wikipedia so if you look at a picture for example this this if you look at a picture <laughs> there we go very slowly this picture is on um commons.wikipedia.org i think it is it's on it's it's on the wikipedia commons uh and then if you look at the actual information for the plant as well uh, it will give you the it'll give you the botanical information here so you can say which family it's in so asteracea uh oh it's called yeah so you can get extra information this comes in handy because as as you you're probably aware plant names change and some some plants like sedums used to be sedum and now they're high high hylotelephium or something and asteracea family uh used to be um composite <laughs> a compositor composite compositor compositor so some of the useful data some of the old info other information that you come across you want to be able to cross reference it what i do recommend for everybody as well is the database of insect database of insects and their food plants but uh, uh, which is which is fantastic because it shows you uh, which which insects use the the, the wildflower your your uk native wildflowers as a food plant so this one here i haven't done this yet but just to it doesn't have asteracea as a family it will be composite 
Compositato, Composite, the old name for, um, <laughs> it's the old name for Asteracea. So Achillea millifolium, there we go. And I'm going to just show you how many, wow. So you, <laughs> I love it, it is brilliant. You look, oh, that is just amazing. I, I, this is this is this is all new to me. This is brilliant. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant. Right. So, you plant the wildflower. Okay. You plant a uh, what they called cone flower. Um, oh, you know what I mean. A cone flower. The prairie plant. The 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 the, the one echinacea. So you plant an echinacea in the UK. It's a host plant to approximately I don't know maybe one or two. <laughs> There will be might be a couple of insects that might have a chew at it. Probably not. Um, same with a buddleia. There's it's not a host plant. It might be a host plant for some for some insects, but it's not the kind of plant of choice because native plants have co-evolved with the wildlife. This is what happens if it's if you plant native. You use native plants. It's a food plant for all the insects, and then other other animals eat the insects. Yep. So this is why we should be using UK natives uh, in the UK, not in North America, don't get me wrong. So this is absolutely amazing. So you have all these beetles, there's Coleoptera down here, you've got all the flies, Diptera. I mean, Hemiptera, I don't even know what they are. They're different, and aphids and scale, plant lice, macro moths, micro moths. And I just don't even know what half of these animals are. And look how many, it's, it's just crazy. And this is just on one plant. So by using UK native wildflowers in a UK garden, this is what you're helping. Yep, this is what you're, you're, you're kind of working towards. You're creating ecosystems. No longer are you just creating gardens for your own pleasure, which is good, and for your own uh, connection with nature, which is good, you're providing it for everybody in the garden so which is better <laughs> so uh yeah brilliant really really good resource do have a look at that um okay crikey okay so now i wanted to look at oh i was going to play you the film i'll play you the film and then i'll, t I'll look at the chat as well Greetings and welcome. This is the setting for the mini woodland gardens. As you can see, that's south that way, and this is the north side of the buildings. They've got the solar panels on the top there, and they have these are flats, or rather, well, grandiosely called apartments. So there's an apartment at the top and an apartment at the bottom. And because of that, they have dividers here. You can see the fencing that's been put in to protect the privacy of the downstairs flat from from this flat but what this has created ideally it would have been i i say it would have been um should have been hard standing for kind of utility area but uh and it's too dark for lawn so i said i'd make a uh, a woodland garden so on the plans this is what i use cad for i mean it's not particularly pretty but it's actually really really useful to be able to mark out roughly where plants are going and so you've got a plan when you come to do them there there are there are six gardens, um, six apartments, and this is the pattern they follow. There's two slightly different patterns. So they're kind of similar plants in them. I'll just show you one really, just so you get the, get the idea of it. So, and it's also a really good idea as well, if you are doing lots of planting, to write a list of the plants down, and then it's much easier to collect them too. So on this side, this is um, north facing, but that's, that's the west. So this will get afternoon sun, hence there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of lawn here, which will be kind of west facing, and over this side. So I'm just going to start talk through the planting as I go around. So west facing, wild strawberry all the way along, and I've got a rhubarb going in where that bit of bamboo is, and a hosta called a uh, royal standard. I think it's Seaboldiana. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a kind. Of, I think it's well. I think they're all pretty much edible, so that should be good. So big hosta there. Big rhubarb there, big hosta here, and then wild strawberry, and there's some self heel down here as well. And this is slightly more, this gets more and more shady around here, and that's the shadiest part around the corner. So here, just on the edge, just catching a bit of sun, I've got some primrose, and then there's another hosta, and there'll be another rhubarb there. And then there's uh, some self heel down here. 
and uh, I've got some yarrow so I'm hoping there's enough light from the west to come through for the for the yarrow here not 100 percent sure because it does get pretty dark but we'll you know if it if it lives it lives and if it doesn't then well it doesn't and then down here this is kind of really dark part i have mostly um yellow pimpernel there's a machia nemorum, which kind of likes part shade i'm hoping it'll it's an evergreen so i'm hoping it'll cope with it but also from the from the darkest part around here i have put in yellow archangel uh, so it was a Lamium, Lamium uh, Galeobdalan, and so yeah, I really, really hope that that will survive. You cannot actually see it, but it's one there, I think, but it's not, yeah. So hopefully these will spread. They get quite big, they're like a yellow dead nettle. And then I've got some Lizomachia Nemorum there, you can just about, about see yellow pimpernel. Not sure how well they'll do, so I've kind of stuffed it. If you can, get lots of plugs and Plant, plant densely. Uh, I've got a foxglove from the hedge and then coming back up this way I have got um, oh well, there should be some meadow sweet somewhere as well possibly some meadow sweet around here and some hedge woundwort stack of sylvatica and meadow sweet is philopendula almaria and then some more foxglove lizomachia and then that goes through to there's a couple of sorrel which you can just about see edible leaves there and there and um, then I have got some um, Aquilegia vulgaris which is columbine down down in there as well so possibly enough light not 100% sure we'll see how it goes and then some ground ivy which you can see down here so there we go that's how I've kind of done it and it's all a bit haphazard uh, what I've done with the path is just got some old bits of wood made a made a edging for it piled in some more wood chip this is really really boggy and really uh wet with a really kind of compacted subsoil as well so it's better yeah we can't get into the can't get into a proper path so it's a wood chip path but at least that delineates where you, know, where you can walk and where the plants are going to come up so it's looking forward to the um it's looking forward to the growing season so <laughs> I hope that worked and that you could hear hear something. I couldn't hear a damn thing, so I don't know if that's probably because I don't have my headphones on. Um, yep. So that yeah, I won't go into the kind of the, the detail of it. My main concern about the the planting that I've done is that there isn't enough light for some of the plants, particularly the 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 columbine and possibly the meadow sweet. I don't know if it will, and the foxgloves. I'm not sure if they'll they'll get enough light to uh, to grow properly. But because a lot of them here, yeah, they were plug plants. They're relatively cheap. What I've done is just cram as much as I can in into particular into a particular site, and then to see what what works and what doesn't work, and how much light will you will get there. There are things that you can do to to yeah. There are things that you can do to see how much light they will will come into an area. There's a very handy. Um, app called sun surveyor which enables you to see where the sun is in the sky at different times of the day and different times of the year and if you want to get really kind of precise about it you can see you can calculate how much light a particular area will get i haven't had time to do that really and i just had to get stuff in the ground and this leads on to my the next point about any garden that you've got is it, it it's a constant uh, it, 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 this is just the beginning yeah this is always a garden is always a beginning because you you are always seeing what works and what doesn't work and the conditions are always changing so you need to adjust and be aware of the changes in the uh, of the changes in the garden and what what plants are thriving and what plants aren't doing so well so move things around if need be so i am quite this is a real pilot project for me and it's really important for me because Firstly, this the Eco Homes project is where I will be uh, setting up a community forest garden and in, involving people. But also, I want to learn about UK native plants and how they fit into forest gardens and the relationship. You know, there's a massive overlap, so that's very exciting. And also because it's you know for selfish reasons, this will be a portfolio website, a portfolio garden for my website for my work. 
And then there's all there's there's the, the thing about being involved in the garden and seeing it work. I don't want to just to, to, to do a garden and then leave it and then not have any more involvement with it. So for example, uh, there's a friend a friend of mine, neighbour um, Dan, I think he's on the chat, <clears throat> and uh, I've worked on a plan for his garden, but it's an ongoing relationship. It's not just here's a plan there you go, um, you sort it out, it is, it is. oh, here's another plant, or oh, I can get this plant for you, and oh, have you thought about this, or oh, there's a change here. It's a, There's an ongoing relationship, and I think it's far more fruitful and far more realistic, uh, more work, but it's it's what you need to do, like with a garden and with a with a space you have to have it's what it's a practice, it isn't something that you just do, tick off, and then put to one side, so yep. So that is really, really exciting. And I'm just so kind of excited about all the, the all the different plants that I've got going on. Um they're 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 just incredible. You know, you just one single plant, you could just do a whole you could do a whole PhD on it, let alone a, a live stream. So meadow sweet, Philopendula almeria, likes damp conditions, part part shade, uh grows uh, flowers. I'm not terribly sure when is it when is it flower? I think it's July. I'm not can't remember. It flowers uh, summertime, mid mid summertime, I think. Um and it has a frothy white flowers with a really pungent, strong smell and that you can use them in, in cocktails. I had vodka and meadow sweet uh with ice and <laughs> ice and a slice last year as a test, as an experiment obviously. Uh, it worked very well and it's it's just a, yeah just a beautiful plant attracts pollinators oh it's just an amazing plant that's just one plant amongst many and when you know oh how many plants are there in the UK native wildflowers it's something like well, I think it's one thousand six hundred UK native plants possibly around that figure and the key thing is they're all very specific. To well, they they cross over. There's an awful lot of crossover, but it's specific to the site that you're working on. So I don't know. Angie's in the oh, she's moving actually. Um, but the Angie from the from the group, she's in the the, the Netherlands. It's very different conditions. There's uh, someone else in the group um, who's just joined the, the the backyard forest group, and she's uh, in the near the mountains in uh, in in France and real continental conditions and mountainous conditions so very high temperatures uh low rainfall very cold in the in the summer and very cold temperatures snow in the winter and the very there's really really specific plants for specific areas so this is where it's exciting this is where it's down to you and down to your knowledge and your appreciation and involvement with your where you live where you are um so it's not it, it, that's that's brilliant that's liberating that's just like something that you can do for where you are and nobody else can do that it's up to it's up to you isn't that, isn't that brilliant it's not that, that's great that's just empowering so <clears throat> that's my, my my cad plan let's go on to um oh my goodness me it's, it's that time already so i just really really want to quickly talk about um my uh, my plans for garden wild so the deadline <clears throat> for a grant application is the 18th of march i think it is so i've got a couple of weeks i need to get a grant application in what it is is setting up an online f uh, wildflower gallery now this is a test one that i have wildflowergallery.uk i'm not and <clears throat> i'm not going to use this piece of software it's too it's too limiting for the purposes it looks a particular way and it's hard to edit it as well it's it's a media manager more than a online gallery but you can get the idea <clears throat> there's featured collections so there'll be um oh hold on a second let me just do that featured collections oh no <laughs> so acid soil different different soil types um different amounts of sun uh and different conditions <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so this will be um this will be the kind of structure this needs working on but this will be the structure of the website so this is just a test oh you're gonna work please yep so you go into say acid soil and there'll be a list of plants of native uk native wildflowers that will work with um in these different conditions um yeah so I've got to look at using the term UK because this actually applies to 
Ireland as well because it's Britain, Britain and Ireland. But I'll sort that out. So you have a range of different plants that work in these conditions, and you can. You, there's a, a great deal of crossover, and the idea is that you go into a particular. This is one I've actually used, Ragged Robin, uh, which is a Lychnis floscuculi, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is it's a stunning, stunning flower. Uh, yeah, just amazing. And there's one with bumblebee, which I've used a lot. And this is the idea behind Garden Wild is to create the the garden beds with uk natives the ornamental beds using uk native wildflowers and then taking photographs like this taking photographs and then kind of promoting the use of uh, native wildflowers and people can you know, view it and get ideas and inspiration and see that they that, that it's there's just so much potential and with so many species of so many different species available, all the different combinations for all the different conditions, it's yeah, you know, that's what this is what the, the garden wild is about. Um Yeah, there's another one. So what I'm actually going to do, I'll just quickly show you the I'm gonna stop talking in a minute. Um I'll quickly show you the Garden Wild website. This is a very, very kind of yeah, you know, basic uh, website just to say this is what we're doing making a wildflower gallery and a and a book and these are the people involved so working with sarah wilson who's uh, a, a a real star she's absolutely brilliant has a podcast roots and all do subscribe to that so i'm working with her she's doing so she's in the garden design and creating the gardens barry is providing the botanical and wildlife expertise on this and you know he's providing the plants and heather uh, working locally here if I'm doing any I'll be doing some growing myself and she'll be taking photographs here and then there's me um, and the idea then is to do a, a gallery and then a book and then possibly and possibly courses further on down the line and just if you are interested if anyone there is interested in, in, in using images there are a kind of variety of different um, different ways of doing it but what I'll be doing is using um, I'll be using Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is, is great. It's a it's a a place to upload images and then and then reuse those images in different in different locations in different situations. So I would totally totally recommend using Cloudinary uh, if you if you're ever wanting to organise a large number of photographs and then kind of distribute them. I'm not a big. I really don't like Google or Facebook or, or Amazon even though I do use them so the, the Cloudinary are, are, are fantastic if you have a lot of long online images that you want to share and distribute and get different resolutions for and use on websites really really good really really good service so I'll be using Cloudinary and then I'll be using it with WordPress and the reason for doing this is everyone knows well not everybody but WordPress is a commonly supported um, piece of software and there'll be some integrate there's some integration between them so I'll get the high resolution images on a file store somewhere and then low resolution images is how I use it on Cloudinary so like 1600 pixels wide and then uh, the WordPress integrate with WordPress from there so make a nice interface for for the website using WordPress and then bringing the images in from Cloudinary so that is what I've been doing which is brilliant as well that's really really exciting that's that's totally that's totally cool um, so yes, if you do want the uh, if you do want the access to the spreadsheet, I will be adding more plants, and I'm just kind of working out what the the best categories are to use. If you're a kind of gardener and you're interested in using these different native UK natives, what's the best ways? You know, what are the best the the best information to have? Because you can't have everything but you can have something. But if you do, if you are interested in looking at it, the wild flower spreadsheet that's the oh, i'll zoom in for you because i've got a zoom in button now yes look at that bit.ly bit.ly forward slash wild hyphen flower hyphen spreadsheet no that's wrong actually oh it's god i've changed it garden hyphen wild hyphen <laughs> garden hyphen wild hyphen spreadsheet <laughs> That is the URL for the spreadsheet. Only 20 plants there. 
and there's uh, 1,560 more to go, and then I'll um, add them. I kind of imagine that there'll be about, I don't know, 300, 300 wild... I'm going to concentrate mostly on wildflowers at this stage, so it'll be about 300, 400 in total, uh, but it's going to take me a while to get to get there. And I might actually put this as part of the grant application because um, what I will also be doing, and I, yeah, I just there's just like so much to sort out. There is uh, an awful lot of free photographs on uh, which which are using a Creative Commons license, which are freely li which are freely licensed, and I will also be researching. I'll be using photographs which are Creative Commons licenses as well and be using those on the website. So it's not just, they're kind of providing alternative images. So it's not just um, bespoke custom photography being used in the Garden Wild Gallery. There will also be Creative Commons stuff as well. And I think it's, yeah, that's kind of provides, provides a greater range. So there we go. Hope that is interesting and useful uh I'm gonna hop over to zoom in a minute where am i where's my chat um <laughs> there we go so i am going to go to zoom i have no idea or else i can find out the zoom link so i'm going to say quickly now thank you very much for watching i hope that's useful and see you again next wednesday